Guess what? What holiday stories am I going to read today? Halloween? Halloween? Yeah. Shall I read Halloween? No. What's the next holiday we're going to have? Valentine's Day. So do you know what I have today? Valentine's Stories about Valentine's and stories about love and candy and Valentine's, all the good things. Who loves candy? Me! I think for Valentine's Day, maybe you'll get some chocolate. All right. Well, look, look at all the stories that I have today. And let me see. I think I'm going to start with this because it's one of my favorite. And it's called Worm Loves Worm. <laughs> worm Loves Worm. It is a funny name. Are you ready? You have it at home? Oh, that's good. It's a nice story. All right, ready? Listen now. Worm loves worm. Let's be married, worm to worm. Yes, answers worm. Let's be married. Think it's a good idea? I do. Wait, says Cricket. You'll need someone to marry you. That's how it's always been done. I'll marry you. Now, can we be married, asked Worm? Wait, says Beetle. You've got to have a best Beetle. Naturally, that would be me. Now, can we be married, asked Worm? Are they all set, do you think? Yeah. Wait, 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 says the bees. You need bride's bees. You need bride's bees. Can we be the bride's bees? Please, please, please. Yes, says Worm. Now, can we be married? Yeah. Think they're ready? Yeah. Uh-oh. You'll need to get rings to wear on your fingers, says Cricket. That's how it's always been done. Uh-oh, we don't have any fingers. You see any fingers there? No, I see We can wear them like belts, says Worm. Wonderful, says Worm. Now, now we can be married. Just make sure to have a band so we can dance, said Beetle. But we don't have any feet to dance, says Worm. We can just wiggle around, says Worm, like this. Can you do it, a worm dance? Fun, says Worm. Now we can be married. Think they're all set? But you still need a white dress, a tuxedo, a top hat, lots and lots of flowers, and a cake with frosting, says the bees. But we don't have heads for hats, says Worm. Or we don't have hands to hold flowers. And we only eat dirt. Wait, says Spider. I can attach the hat and flowers to you with my sticky web. How does that sound? Thank you, says Worm and Worm. But who's going to eat the cakes, asked the bees. I can eat the cake along with Cricket and Beetle, says Spider. What did you say, asked Cricket and Beetle? Nothing, says Spider with a smile. Now, we can be married now, says Worm. Which one of you is the bride? Asked the bees. How can we be bride's bees if we don't know who the bride is? I can be the bride, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. But one of you has got to be the groom. Or how can I be the best beetle, asked Beetle. I can be the groom, says Worm. I can too, says the other Worm. We can be both. 
Amazing, says spiders. Really, asked Beetle and the bees. Wait, says Cricket. That isn't how it's always been done. Then we'll just change how it's been done, says Worm. Yes, says Worm, we'll change it. And so they were married because Worm loves Worm. And that's the end. Did you like that one? I think I like, you like that one? Thumbs up? I think I Second, oh. Froggy's first kiss. Mm -hmm. All right, who's going to kiss a frog? Nobody. Nobody? Someone's going to kiss this frog, I think. Because it's called Froggy's first kiss. So maybe he never had a kiss before this story. It was the week before Valentine's Day. And for Froggy, Valentine's Day meant candy, but it also meant love. At school, Froggy's mind wandered. Froggy! cried Miss, T Miss Witherspoon, his teacher. What? Kindly pay attention, dear. And that's when he saw the prettiest girl frog in the whole world, the new girl in his class. Her name was Frogalina. And when she smiled at him, his insides got all soft and wiggly, like he had eaten caterpillars for breakfast. Froggy called his teacher. What, he said, your eyes should be on your work, dear. It's not polite to steer. Oops, said Froggy. At recess, Frogalina smiled at him through the monkey bar. He was hanging upside down. And when he saw her, he felt smack on his head, bonk. At lunch, Frogalina sat beside him. She smiled at him, and she opened her lunchbox. I have a treat for you, Froggy. Close your eyes. And she gave him a big, juicy apple. You thought it was a kiss, huh? <laughs> After lunch, Froggy and Frogalina played tetherball together. Frogalina wound up socked the ball, and Froggy was so busy gazing into her eyes, the ball hit him on the head, bonk, and, and knocked him down. At lunch the next day, Frogalina smiled and opened her lunchbox. I have a goodie for you, Froggy. Close your eyes. And she gave him a cookie shaped just like a heart. Did you think it was going to be a kiss? No. That afternoon, Froggy and his class made valentines. They cut hearts out of paper. Some big, some little, some red, some pink. And on just one, Froggy wrote, I love you. He didn't want any of his classmates to see, especially Frogalina. So he worked under his desk. Froggy, called Mrs. Witherspoon. What, called Froggy. Please work at your seat, dear, and don't make such a mess. <laughs> when Froggy stood up, he hit his head, bonk, on the desk, and everybody laughed, especially Frogalina. At lunch the next day, Frogalina sat beside him again. 
She smiled and opened her lunchbox. I have a surprise for you, Froggy. Close your eyes. And what do you think she gave him? Right. A big juicy kiss. Smack on his cheek. <laughs> Splutted fro froggy looking more red in the face than green. <laughs> Froggy grabbed his lunchbox and flopped away. Flop, 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 flop. His tummy felt so weird. He couldn't even eat his lunch, not even his dessert. On the bus home after school, everybody teased Froggy, even Mac, his best friend. They sang, Froggy has a girlfriend. Froggy has a girlfriend. No, I don't, cried Froggy. I do not. But his heart felt heavy. Was it love? No. Was it hunger? No. Was it his backpack filled with Valentine cards? No. no. What did you do at school today, Froggy? Asked his mother. No. We made Valentine, said Froggy. Wait. Did you make one for someone very special? Froggy turned almost purple. He flopped into his room. Flop. Flop, flop. <coughs> but the next morning, on Valentine's Day, Froggy served his mother breakfast in bed and said, Mom, that someone special is you. And he gave his mother the big heart that said, What? I love you. And his mother gave Froggy a whole bunch of kisses, candy kisses. What'd you think? Thumbs up? Yeah, I love that one. What did Froggy do when, it, when he got the kiss? Yeah. Did he like it though? I think he did. I think he Pretty good? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do. Oh, this is a cute, silly one. How about a kiss like this? This is a quick one. It's all about kisses. A kiss like this. A giraffe kiss is gentle and tall. Let's see. Like this. That's a big, tall kiss. Can you make a big, tall kiss? Okay, a mouth kiss is quick and small, like this. That's a mouse kiss. Oh, you kiss just like mouse, like a mouse. Oh, I hear lots of mice kisses. A fish kiss is fizzy and bubbly. Oh, I hear some bubbles. Just like that. Let's hear a fish kiss again. All right, let's see if we can kiss like a bee kisses. Fuzzy and buzzy. Does it sound like a bee to you? No. How about? And an elephant kiss is long and tooty toot. You guys kiss like elephants. An owl kiss is toot 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 toot. Ooh. Ooh. And there's the kiss. I think you guys kiss mostly like elephants. My, oh my, look, everybody's kissing. Now there's only one kiss missing. Your kiss, like this. All right, good kissing.
But you know what? You still kiss like elephants. I don't know what story. But I think we'll read I Love You, The Purplest. The Purplest. Let, yep. Huh? Do you have this book at school? Huh? Does anybody know? It's a. All right. Let's see what I Love You, The Purplest is. Early in the evening, the brothers and their mama finished supper in the sturdy red cabin and set out to fish. The lake slowed its thrashing to a soft, even beat, and the mosquitoes dipped low in the water, and the water bug skittered to the top. The moon glowed on one side of the lake, while the sun shimmered on the other. This was the time when fishing was best. Max exploded from the cabin, twirling the shovel in front of him. Mama came next, and then his brother Julian. Julian shut that cabin door tightly to keep it safe from bears. Bear? Yep. Bear? Julian scooped the dirt to find the fattest worms. And Max jumped on the shovel and flung dirt in the air until a tangle of worms filled his can. Mama. Who has the most worms? Yep. Him or him? Mama smiled. Max, your can is full of the liveliest worms. And Julian, your can has the juiciest worms. Max, Julian, and Mama stepped into the wooden boat, and Julian took one oar, and Max took the other. Julian planted his blue boots wide, and he took deep, even strokes. Max braced his red boots against the ribs of the boats and stroked quickly through the water. The brothers' faces were hot, and they gulped at the air, and Julian gasped. Mama, who's the best rower? Mama's eyes grew soft. Why, Julian, you took the deepest strokes, and Max, your strokes were the fastest. The three fished and the, till the stars sprinkled the sky and water turned dark as night. And in the end, Mama caught one fish, Julia caught one, and Max caught three. I'm the best fisherman, called Max, hoisting his fish right in the air. And Julian pushed his hat brim low on his face. Three fish. What a bountiful fisherman you are, said Mama. And Julian, you're the cleverest fisherman. Your fish hid in the weeds, but you waited. When your barber jerked in the water, you kept your pole high, and you reeled in a fine, fat fish. When the fishing and the baths and the stories were done, Mama tucked the brothers into bed. Julian slept on the top bunk, and she reached up to kiss him goodnight. Mama, whispered Julian, his hands forming a tunnel around her ear. Who do you love the best? Mama thought for a moment, and then she whispered, why, Julian? I love you the bluest. I love you the color of a dragonfly at the tip of its wing. I love you the color of a cave in its deepest hidden part where grizzly bears and bats curl up until night. The midst of a mountain, the splash of a waterfall, the hush of a whisper. The breath in Julian's chest grew and grew and grew until he couldn't hold it in any longer. Then it came out in a long, velvety sigh. <sighs> Mama crouched low to the bunk where Max slept. Mama wiggled his finger for Mama to come close, and he whispered, Mama, who do you love the best? Why, Max, I love you the reddest. I love you the color of the sky before it blazes into night. 
I love you, the color of a leopard's eyes when it prowls through the jungle, and the color of a campfire fire at the edge of the flame. A wide open hug, the swirl of a magic cape, the thunder of a shout. The smile on Mac's face grew and grew until his cheeks couldn't hold it any longer. Then it came out in a big thundery laugh. Later in the evening, the brothers and their mama slept, one in the top bunk, glowing in the evening moon, one in the bottom bunk, shimmering like the evening sun, and mama in the big bed, dreaming of the boy. I know, everybody does, right? And daddies. And all our family, right? We love our families. Okay, are we ready for another story? Another Valentine story. I think we'll read Love is Real. Is it real? Yes, it is. Okay, you ready? Okay. Oh, I'm going to let you see all the pages. Love is in the little things that fill my heart until it sings. See, love makes your heart sing makes you feel happy and it helps you dress love will clean up any mess love keeps droopy laces tied and counts to 20 when you hide love holds on to steer your bike and packs a picnic lunch you like Love can be a silly clown who makes you smile instead of frown. Love puts sprinkles on the top and love can dance the bunny hop. Yes, love can do everything. Love will help you climb a tree and tape a bandage to your knee. Love serves apples sliced up thin and finds a game that you can win. Love creates a castle moat and salvages a, shrinking, a sinking boat. Love will listen when you tug. Love swoops down and gives a hug. Love plays lion in a cow crouch and snuggles closer on the couch. Does it snuggle on the couch? Do you snuggle on the couch? Yeah. yeah. Love unknots your tangled hair and finds a special book to share. Love does all these little things to fill your heart until it sings. Love is real the whole day through. It's always there from me to you. And that's the end. What did you think? Good? Do you like stories about love and Valentine's? We have one more to read. You want to read it? Yeah. All right. That'll be the last one. Then you're going to do your poem for me. Right? Um, when we're finished with this last story, okay? We'll see. A giant crush. Look how hard he's working on their Valentine. Are you guys going to do Valentine's? Yeah. Okay. A giant crush. My best friend Jackson has been making Valentine's all day long. Who's the special Valentine for, Jackson, I asked. It's not special, Cooper, Jackson says. Really, I say? How come it's so full of chocolate kisses you can barely close it? Jackson doesn't answer me. You think it's special? I do. On Monday, Jackson comes to school with a giant yellow flower. By show and tell, the flower is gone. At recess, 
Carter Corey steals the ball from Jackson and dribbles it down to Cammy. He swipes Cammy's scarf and stuffs it in his pocket. Jackson gets the ball back, but all the girls are chasing Carter Corey. No one is playing soccer anymore. Carter and Cammy sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. All the girls are singing that. The next day, Jackson has chocolate hearts in his lunch. I'm hoping he'll give me some. But when we get to the cafeteria, they're gone. All gone. What happened to the candy, Jackson? Jackson's cheeks flushed red, as red as a wrong answer pencil. After school, Jackson watches the girls play soccer. Carter Corey comes over. He climbs the fence and shouts, Look at me! I'm even bigger than Jackson! I'm a giant! Fee, fi, fo, fum! All the girls laugh, and Jackson turns red again. On the way home, Jackson drags his backpack bumpity bump along the pavement. What's the matter, Jackson? Carter, Corey loves Cammy, Jackson whispers. Does she know who the flower's from? Jackson shakes his head. Does she know who the candy's from? Jackson puckers his lip out. How's she supposed to know you like her? Jackson's face crumbles up. I would know if she liked me, he whispers. If you're going to like a girl, Jackson, you have to at least tell her. Jackson kicks a can bangity bang down the sidewalk. What if she doesn't like me? Why wouldn't she like you? Jackson's eyes are fixed on the ground. Because I'm a giant, Cooper. Yeah, so? Is she too tiny for you? Of course not. She's perfect. She's perfect in every way. Finally, Valentine's Day is here. And right before recess, Miss Mosscrop delivers the Valentines. She puts Jackson Valentine on Cammy's desk. Cammy has a boyfriend. Cammy has a boyfriend. All the girls cry. And Jackson's head sinks low. He's getting sad. Just then, the bell rings. Cammie shoves back her chair. It clatters to the ground. And she says, does anybody want to play soccer, she asks, as her face as pink as a valentine heart. I give Jackson a shove. He takes a wobbly step forward and knocks his chair over, too. All the girls giggle. Jackson and Cammy play two-person soccer all recess long. I think they're having fun. At the end of the day, we race to the cubbies. When Cammy grabs her book, it falls open. And pressed between the pages is a big yellow flower. Who gave you that, Carter Corey wants to know. And Cammy's face turns pink all over again. Carter looks from Cammy to Jackson and back again. It was Jackson. A giant is your boyfriend? I do not have a boyfriend, Carter Corey, Cammy tells him. But if I did have a boyfriend, he would be totally a giant. Cammy likes you, I whispered to Jackson. Jackson throws his backpack into the ear. Yes, she does, Coop. Yes, she does. And that's the end. So see, they did like each other, right? Oh, we're not yet.